Hi guys, it's car booty time again. So we're going to look at some more of the computers I got at the last car boot sale. This is the one that actually made the video there. You can see there were six of them. I showed two of them on the previous video. We'll do two more on this one. Now, if you watched the previous one, and if you didn't, why not? Yeah, but if you watched the previous one, you'll know that I looked at the two computers. And I have about £220 worth of retro gear there. Some quite sought after, or certainly very popular on the retro scene, so fairly easy to sell. That means I'm about £100 up, roughly already, with four more machines to look at. So let's get on to machine number three, which is this one. This has two USBs on the back on board game port. So this again is probably a fairly old machine. Graphics card in this one, two additional USBs at the bottom there, which could be an add-on card or just a bracket, a LAN, modem. I would expect this is quite possibly something like a Pentium 2 maybe something like that of course i never seem to consider much of the possibility it is an amd machine but you guys can get your guess in i have to uh, remove some screws i would like these uh quick release type ones thumb screws can we call them yeah so i like those let's have a look what's inside the box so what do you think guys get your guess in yeah get into the comments and if you like and do you like this blue case by the way yeah this blue blue and beige ATX case what do you think it's all a bit scratched and scuffed and dented of course and you'll see that straight away if I go to the other camera yeah I think see it's not in perfect condition okay what's inside it you'll see first oh it's um I think it's some sort of AMD machine. Yeah, I think it's an AMD machine. The graphics card has a fan on. I always find that interesting with AGP cards. The fan feels like it might have seized up though. It's not seized, but it doesn't move freely. Okay, no ISO on this one. I see straight away a couple of bad capacitors there, at least at least a couple of bad capacitors. No hard drive in this one. So let's get this motherboard out on the bench. Do we see a model number? Yeah, Gigabyte. So GA7VA. I'm confident enough this is like an Athlon machine. Okay, so we have all the capacitors around here. These look okay. It's this one that's bad. You can see there that's bulged and that's the same type I think as these two and this one and this one so we have five bad capacitors thousand microfarad 6.3 volts okay I have those in stock I can replace those everything else looks quite clean on this don't see any glaring issues apart from those capacitors Bit of dust, but of course you would expect that, I would think. Who knows where these things have been stored? Okay. And this looks very much like an AMD Athlon type heatsink to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Okay, so let's get these capacitors changed and then let's see what that does. In the meantime, also, we have a quick loop. So this is the modem card, that's for the bin. This is the LAN card, that's also for the bin. And that's a little bit stiff, it may well work. This is a, oh, this is an MX440S, okay? So this is a common AGP card, I see quite a lot of them. I don't think it has any particularly great value to be quite honest so i think the value if there is any great value to this is going to be in the motherboard 
if it's an Athlon board without ISA, it's probably about £40 worth. Just a guess, okay. So let's get these capacitors changed and let's see, first of all, does it actually work? Okay, so they are replaced. One, two, three, four, five. All in the correct way round. Worth checking this. You'll find out later if you don't check it. You could say that saves you a job, but that's probably not the best way to go at it. Nice and clean. There's no separate 12 volt connector on this. There are, looks like one, two, three VRM phases here. These may well run from five volts rather than 12 volts on these older boards. Could run from 12. So I'll connect up the power supply. We need the analyzer card on off switch speaker, the various bits and bobs. Now let's see if this boots up. Okay, I don't have the graphics card attached at the moment. There's no onboard graphics on this. Power supply on, what does it do? It's booting. C1 is normally a RAM problem. Oh, it's gone past that and it's asking for a graphics card. 2D, that's generally asking for a graphics card. 2D or 2B. I've inserted the graphics card that came with it attached to the VGA monitor. Let's see if it likes it. So again, booting up. Went past it this time. I have a blue light on the monitor. I have a picture. I saw it saying 2002 NVIDIA. Athlon XP2800, so that's what it is. This one didn't come with a hard drive or anything, but I'm fairly confident this is good. Being what it is, I think my guess of being worth about £40 is about right. But let's have a look. So I'm on eBay. This is the GA-7VA. Let's have a look. Oh, well, there's one for sale at £85. Doesn't mean it's worth that, of course. Uh, that's something. Oh, the same one. Parts only on sale for 50 Another one on sale for 89 Okay. Well, the asking prices are a bit more than I would have expected for these. They don't seem to be rare. Let's go to the all-important advanced button and into the sold listings. This will tell you what it's actually worth. And we can see that somebody bought one in auction for £8.78 and somebody else bought one for £16 or best offer. So that is basically what it's worth. Yeah. I wonder why all the ones for sale are asking such high prices for them when it's obvious to anybody who looks. And surely if you're listing something, you would look. How much these are actually worth? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so my motherboard isn't really worth anything. I'll take the highest of those two and say it's worth £16. Add it to my 220 from the previous video. Let's call it 15. So it's 235. That's a nice number to remember. And that's basically what they're worth. The strangest thing about that, I was just saying, is why all the ones for sale asking a price that is clearly above the market value? Guys, you know where to comment, okay? So that's that one recapped. Was it worth it? Well, it's working. Goes into my stash. Who knows? One day it might be worth more. Let's have a look at another machine from this batch. Oh, epilogue. What I haven't looked for is the value of this. I'm pretty sure I know these aren't worth a great deal. Let's see. Well, a lot of them have sold. Mine's 128 meg. Some of these were saying 64 meg. Let me put the space in there to match the listings and uh, 128. 
Oops, missed the wall off. Let's see if that's uh, making any difference. Well, there's two here, very similar with the cooling fans on. £18 sold for in 30 so call that 20 as well. So that gives us now something like, take an average, 255 so it's getting a little bit better. I'll just check if the fan's working on this one. Actually, I didn't really notice. No, the fan doesn't run, so it isn't worth anything, okay. We're back to 235 and it's not really worth repairing either, unfortunately. I might, I might just find it on another card, but yeah. No way. <laughs> so here's the next machine. You saw this on the car boot sale, so you pretty much know what this is. It has the seven segment LED display, the turbo button. Very likely to be a 486. Could be an early Pentium 1. Interesting, nobody called them Pentium 1 at the time, by the way. Same as World War 1. Nobody called it World War 1. Until we had two, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. We have a sound card, could well be a sound blaster in here. A graphics card, it's kind of in the middle, which makes me think this is probably PCI. Could even be an ISA machine. This was probably just a bracket, in actual fact, not a card. Yeah, it's loose. Same with that one, quite possibly. Could be a multi IO card in here. Hmm which would possibly make it a Visa machine. I've only ever found two of which one worked. The Creative Quad Speed. We'll see if that's actually worth anything, being creative. And that's basically what we have. The case is a bit tired, to be quite honest. Let's open this one up and let's see what we have. I'm gonna say this is a 486 and then we'll take it from there. But you guys, timestamp, comment. And don't be afraid of being wrong. I mean, am I ever afraid of being wrong? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. So, we have a Socket 7. So, early Pentium machine. Looks like four ice. Uh, Three or four PCI, AT machine, hard drivers in this one. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna get all this out onto the bench. Let's have a good look at it before we try and power it up. And hope some of you guys guessed right, yeah, because I was wrong. Okay, so we have four ISA, three PCI, a couple of these Sims. Oh, it has a slot there for like PC133 as well, so it's both. This is a Coast slot, but there isn't one fitted, so Coast, cash on a stick. That would speed the machine up, allegedly. Yeah. AT power supply. The little uh, bolt things off here are missing, so this just fell off. But this is a Cirrus Logic. Yeah, fastware. Okay, Cirrus Logic. That one, GD5446. Saw a lot of these back in the day. No problem finding some bolts to put that back onto there. Okay. Don't think that's of any particular value though. And these motherboards, I don't think are ever worth as much as you might expect. The 486s are worth quite a bit more. 1995, so just shy of 30 years old, this one. This might be worth a bit more, so this is the Creative... It says Creative Tech 95, same year, 1995. CT2959 Sound Blaster 16 or something. Ice Accord. And I think that might be worth as much as the motherboard, but we'll see. And the Creative Quad Speed. So I have that as well. November 1995. 
And somebody commented that the Creative Quad Speed usually comes with a Sound Blaster card, and this is the IDE interface on there specifically for the CD-ROM. Okay. Right. The motherboard looks nice and clean, so let's power this up. We'll put the analyzer card on this one just to see what it does. I'll attach a speaker as well. It has a speaker connector. It may only work with the ISA analyzer card. Okay, so speaker attached. We'll put this in. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, the hard drive. So this is old. This is a Connor hard drive again. Looks like a 420 meg. I think I've only ever found one. I know I definitely found one of these working because we looked at it on one of the videos. And I think everyone was a bit amazed it actually worked. These things make a glorious sound if they actually run, okay? I'll leave the graphics card for now. Let's see if the analyzer card does anything and I'll get a known good AT power supply. Let's see. It's booting. Oh, and he's asking for the graphics card. Maybe this one works as well. Let's try it then with the graphics card. You can't see the analyzer now, it is still there. Let's see, what do we have? We have a picture, so Pentium S100, I think this is before the Pentium MMX. 16 meg of RAM, yeah, saying there's no keyboard. It's saying there's no keyboard, press F1 to continue, yeah, okay. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, that doesn't it? I'll get a keyboard. I don't have a serial mouse still. I'll attach the hard drive and let's see if this thing actually boots up. Okay, I've attached the keyboard. One of these days I will find a mouse, a serial mouse at the car boot cell. I must admit I'm not particularly looking. I should do, I should look harder. I'll have a good look this next time. I could really do with a serial mouse. Don't seem to be able to find them on eBay particularly. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure there are some around. Right, let's try this with the hard drive. So power on. Hard drive spinning up. Oh, it sounds healthy. Okay, now we press Dell to enter setup. Or F1 to continue. Let's go to the setup. Yeah. Does it detect the hard drive? It certainly does. Okay. Set up defaults. Yes. I don't think that loses the hard drive. Well, it's there again anyway. Okay. Save and exit. Does it boot? Yes, it does boot. Windows 95. That sounds glorious, guys, yeah. Ha, oh, it's purring. It's purring. Yes, it's not found a mouse. No, I haven't found one either. I know the feeling. <laughs> okay. I'll boot it up and then I'll shut it down. I'll put the sound card in and boot it again, I think. It's probably found the monitor now. Oh, hard drive control it found. Okay. Virus scan 95. 
It now wants to restart. I think. Oh, well, at this point, let's put the sound card in as well. Seems it's going to reboot anyway. Okay. Sound card attached. I probably should have found a different slot because it's hitting the uh, heatsink here, but it's in level, to be quite honest. Yeah, uh, just about at least. Yeah, okay. Let's risk it. I don't think it's a real risk. Power back on. The hard drive purrs. It said it was a Sound Blaster 16, then I saw it, so it knows it's there. I find sound cards extremely reliable. I think I've only ever found one faulty auditory Sound Blaster card. Otherwise, they just seem to work. I guess there's no real stress on them, basically. Yes, we know about the mouse. Printer, VGA, display adapter, Serious Logic, got it. It wants to restart again. Okay, we can see it's found the graphics card because we have a color picture. Virus Scan 95, and we're there. So we're in Windows 95. So this is working, that's nice. Whether it's worth as much as I think it should be, I don't know. I think the 486s seem to be more valuable. But this would make a really nice DOS gaming machine, I'm sure. Okay, so we'll shut that down and then let's see if we have any money's worth here. The motherboard doesn't have a model number printed on it. This is common. Somebody told me, <laughs> somebody told me, several times, several people, that this number I see at the bottom of the BIOS screen will tell me what the motherboard is, okay? I can see i430VX, so that is the chipset. 440BX is the one that's valuable, I think. We'll sort after more, but let's have a look. BC-00, will this really tell me what it is? Oh, there you go. So it's a PC Chips Syntec M520. Okay. That's what it is. Okay, let's see if we can find something on eBay. So we'll start with M520 motherboard. Uh, and one sold for £20. Yeah, that's what they're worth. I did say these are not really worth what you might think they should be worth. That's my opinion. So £20 for that one. So that puts us up to 255 again. Okay. Up to 255 the graphics card, which is the GDE 5446. Worth more, actually, than the motherboard. One sold for 33, but another one sold for 20. So we'll call it 20. Uh, that's the same one as mine. That one actually sold for less. That sold for 10, that sold for 20, uh, 25. So the price is a bit all over, but 20 seems a good average. So that gives us 255275 for our original investment of 120. And bear in mind, that's 275 pounds. And I bought this in euros. So there's an exchange rate. A pound is worth more than a euro. Sorry, that takes us to 275, not 255. Losing track of where I was. Um, sound card. CT2959. Sound Blaster 16. Doesn't find anything. Well, certainly the number that's on it. Okay, so it doesn't find it. It finds similar things. 
but not that one. That is a Sound Blaster 16. Oh, that's probably because this sticker says CT2959. You can see it quite clearly, Creative Labs Inc. But the card itself says it's a CT2950. Anybody know why that's on there? Is there any difference? Why does it have a different number? But anyway, CT2950. Now we'll probably find it. Yeah, 41, 42, 40. The price is basically the same. I mean, that one was cheaper, but that was the same. I think we can say the price is 49, 42, 40, 45. It's right in the middle of those two and those two. Uh, 45, so that's 275 and the 45, 280, 320. Well, looking good. How about the uh, Creative Quad Speed? I don't know if this is actually working or not. It's a, generally about 65, 35, I find. I had about 100 I went through, and that gave me that kind of uh, success rate. Uh, that doesn't help. CR581J. Just put the CR581. Still doesn't help. Dash J. Still doesn't help. Probably won't help either. Ah. No, I don't find one sold. Are there any for sale? I don't find any for sale either. That's interesting. This is in listings for sale, not sold. See, oh, try this again. Do you know, guys, I can't find one of these for sale. I can't find one sold, so I have to ask you guys. Assuming it works, is it worth anything? Okay. That's the model number I'm using. No, no other markings, really. Okay, mystery. What's that worth, guys? anything and lastly this hard drive this uh, rather nice sounding connor hard drive 420 meg cfs 420a i think that's the model number oh tells us the same okay cfs 420a ha <laughs> well that's what people want for them very rare, not quite so rare, because I've just found another one, yeah. In fact, it's not really that rare, because there's a lot for sale, but they're all asking basically the same price. That one is a bit cheaper. How about sold listings? Well, these do sell. That was untested. They sell for that? I mean, it's there, guys. It's sold. 23rd of August, not long ago, within the last two weeks. Okay, so that one I need to run a surface scan, put the listing on eBay together with the surface scan results. That's one valuable hard drive. So where were we up to? Three, sorry, 275. And another 115. That's 375. 390 we're up to now for my... 120 euros investment and i still have two machines to look at okay guys hope you enjoyed that were you surprised by the value of some of those things that have actually sold yeah let me know get to the comments below were you surprised this pentium one motherboard is worth so little i actually was get into the comments below and i look forward to seeing you all soon again on world electronics repair ciao for now guys